the video introducing you to the various trigonometric functions and how they should be applied to various angles. There are six trigonometric functions total. There is sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. The abbreviations for each of these can be seen in the parentheses. This is often how we will write these trig functions with their abbreviations. <clears throat> now, consider a right triangle. A right triangle has a right angle in it. <clears throat> the side across from the right angle is called the hypotenuse. So I'll label side R as the hypotenuse. And then the two sides that meet to form the right angle, side X and side Y, those are called legs. So Y is a leg, X is a leg. <clears throat> what we do with the trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, is we apply them to an angle. In this case, we call that angle theta. Typically, we will use Greek letters to represent angles. So theta is just a generic angle. <clears throat> sine, sine of theta. Sine of theta means you take the opposite leg and put it over the hypotenuse. So that would be y over r. Cosine of theta. Cosine. Think about coworkers, the word co. You want the side that's adjacent, that's closest to the angle, the leg, x. And you want to put it over the hypotenuse, r. Adjacent over hypotenuse, x over r. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So you go to your angle theta. Opposite is y, adjacent is x. The hypotenuse is not used here. <clears throat> now there is a chant that can help you remember sine, cosine, and tangent. And that chant is actually sa, ka, toa. What does this mean? Well, s is for sine. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse. <clears throat> Ka. C is for cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then TOA. T is for tangent. O is opposite. A is adjacent because tangent is opposite over adjacent. So you can use this chant to help you remember these first three trig functions. <clears throat> now, if you know the first three trig functions, it might be a little bit easier to do these last three trig functions. Cosecant. Cosecant and sine are reciprocals of each other, meaning they are flipped versions. If sine is opposite over hypotenuse, then cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So instead of y over r, it'll be r over y. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so you have this s-c pairing that's happening here. Secant, cosine are reciprocals of each other. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. We have x over r, well now we're going to have r over x. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Tangent's opposite over adjacent, cotangent's adjacent over opposite. So we originally had y over x, we will now have x over y. So these are the six trigonometric functions and how they are found whenever you apply them to an angle. <clears throat> Let's work out our first example. So it says, the point, negative 6, negative 5, is on the terminal side of an angle in standard position. Find the exact value of each of the six trigonometric functions. Well, the first thing I see here is I see a point, negative 6, negative 5. So I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to graph that point. <clears throat> so negative 6, negative 5. I'll plot a point at negative 6, negative 5. And to make your right triangle here, from the point to the origin, you will draw your diagonal line. Then, from the point toward the x-axis, you will draw a vertical line. <clears throat> Notice that we now have a triangle. The angle that is closest to the origin is going to be our angle theta. 
That is our angle theta. So notice that we have a side here of the triangle of length negative six, so to speak, and a height here of negative five. Now I will be finding the trig function's values at this angle. <clears throat> However, the issue is I don't know this hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse because yes, there is a right angle here. So the hypotenuse is across from the right angle. <clears throat> How do I find the hypotenuse of a right triangle if I know the two legs? <clears throat> well, simple, right? Pythagorean theorem. So we have to dig back into our algebraic toolbox here and use Pythagorean theorem, which states that negative five squared plus negative six squared is equal to, and you can just put a placeholder here for this side. We'll, we'll just call it R, I guess and we'll find out what r is. <clears throat> so negative five squared plus negative six squared is equal to r squared. That means 25 plus 36 is r squared. 61 is equal to r squared. This is a quadratic equation that can be solved by taking the square root of both sides. So I have square root of 61 equals r. So my hypotenuse measure is actually going to be 61 in this case. Now we are ready to, we will find sine of theta. <laughs> sine, sine was opposite, so negative five over hypotenuse, square root of 61. This is negative five over square root of 61. <laughs> now we have to rationalize this because we have a radical in the denominator. So I will multiply by the square root of 61 over itself. And this will give me negative five square root of 61 over 61. Now you can leave the negative sign in the numerator or you can bring it out front of the fraction. Either way is perfectly fine. <clears throat> Next, how about cosine of theta? Cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So go to your angle theta, the leg that's adjacent or side that's adjacent is negative 6, hypotenuse is square root of 61. So I have negative 6 over square root of 61. <clears throat> Guess what we're going to do again? We're going to rationalize. Multiply by square root of 61 over itself. So you'll have negative 6 square root of 61 over 61. Now you can also once again choose to bring the negative sign out front, but once again that's just personal preference. <clears throat> Next, the third one, tangent of theta. <clears throat> tangent is opposite over adjacent, so negative 5 over negative 6. The hypotenuse is not used here, so negative 5 over negative 6. That is actually going to be just positive 5 sixths. Next, cosecant. Remember, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So sine is negative 5 over square root of 61. Cosecant will be square root of 61 over negative 5. And once again, you can bring that negative sign out front if you would like. <coughs> Next, secant. Time for secant. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. I had negative six over square root of 61. So now I'll have square root of 61 over negative six. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring that negative six out front. <clears throat> and then there's cotangent. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So let me just go to my answer five over six and I'm gonna flip it and make it six over five. So these are the six trigonometric functions values at the angle theta in this particular example. So there's six different answers. Please take note that there are a total of four of them that are negative and two of them that are positive. We'll talk about that in a little while in the future. <clears throat> now, we're actually gonna learn how to find the trig functions values at specific angle measures. So first we're gonna start off nice and simple. We're gonna talk about how to find the trig functions values at angles that are zero, 90, 180, 270, or 360 degrees. In radians, remember this is zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, or two pi. 
This diagram I have over here on the right hand side <clears throat> is your unit circle. It's called the unit circle because the origin is at 0, 0 and it has a radius of 1. So notice that these ordered pairs, so I have 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 or 270 and then 0, I go back to 360 degrees here if I was just to keep going round and round forever. In radians this would be 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and if I was to keep going I would come back to 2 pi. <clears throat> now notice that these points, I have 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1, they behave just like ordered pairs. <clears throat> well the cool thing about these points is that the first number in each of these ordered pairs is actually cosine's value at that specific angle measure. And then the second coordinate in these ordered pairs is actually sine's value at each of these ordered pairs for the when the trig function is applied to the angle. <coughs> so let's actually do some trig function evaluations at some specific angle measures. Cosine of 90 degrees. So go to your unit circle diagram here, find 90 degrees. I'm at 0, 1. Where is cosine here? Cosine is the first coordinate in the ordered pair. Cosine is the first coordinate in the ordered pair. Sine is the second. An easy way to remember this is that C comes before S. Cosine before sine. So cosine of 90 degrees is 0. Tangent of 3 pi over 2. So that brings me down here to 270 degrees. That is 3 pi over 2. Now the issue is we didn't even talk about tangent being one of the numbers in the ordered pair. It's just cosine and sine. <clears throat> well, there's a, a trick with tangent that you're going to learn a little bit later, and that trick is that tangent is actually going to be sine over cosine. So we wrote tangent in terms of sine and cosine. <clears throat> sine of 3 pi over 2 over cosine of 3 pi over 2. Looking at our ordered pair, 0, negative 1. Cosine is first. Sine is second. So you actually get negative 1 over 0, which is undefined. Now we're at cosecant of 540 degrees. That is a huge angle measure. And we'll talk more about this in the next video, but every trig function repeats itself every 360 degrees. So I can actually not change the value of this trig expression by simply subtracting 360 degrees from the angle. When you subtract 360 degrees from the angle, you actually end up getting at 180 degrees. So I have cosecant of 180 degrees. Once again, we have an issue. I only know cosine and sine at each of these key points, as they're called. So cosecant, what is cosecant in terms of sine? Well, it's the reciprocal. So cosecant of 180 degrees is 1 over sine of 180 degrees. This is 1 over, so I get 180 degrees. Cosine's negative 1, sine is 0. So my sine of 180 degrees is 0. 1 divided by 0, that's undefined. So that is evaluating trig functions values at key points. <laughs> now, what if you don't have a key point? What if your angle measure is not 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, and so forth? Well, now we're going to talk about how to find the trig functions values at angles with measures 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. <clears throat> so this is a little bit of throwback to geometry for those of you that might even vaguely remember this, but I have here a 45, 45, 90 triangle and a 30, 60, 90 triangle. <clears throat> Alright, so looking at the 45, 45, 90 triangle here, we have a total of two different side measures. <clears throat> the side across from the 45 degree angle is 1 in both cases. The side across from the 90 degree angle is square root of 2. So this is always the relationship of a 45, 45, 90 triangle.
Next, 30-60-90 triangle. The side across from the 30 degree angle is 1, 60 degree angle is square root of 3, and 90 degree angle is 2. An easy way to remember this is there is a theorem that goes with triangles that says that the smallest side is always across from the smallest angle and the largest side is always across from the largest angle. So my largest angle here is definitely this 90 degree angle. My largest side is 2. My smallest angle is definitely 30 degrees. My smallest side measure is 1, which leaves 60 degrees with square root of 3. <clears throat> it's important to learn these relationships. Example time. Find the value of each of the following. I will begin with cosine of pi over 4. If you don't like it when they give something to you in radians, it's okay if you secretly think about it in terms of degrees. Pi over 4 is 45 degrees. <clears throat> so cosine of 45 degrees. Well, I think I need to draw me a 45, 45, 90 triangle. 45, 45, 90 triangle. <clears throat> so go ahead and label your side measures. You have 1, 1, and then the hypotenuse is square root of 2. <clears throat> Let's think about cosine. Cosine. Cosine of 45 degrees. Cosine, I believe, when we talked about it, was adjacent over hypotenuse. That's what cosine is. So if I go to a 45 degree angle, it doesn't matter which one, adjacent is 1, hypotenuse is square root of 2. Remember, when we say adjacent or opposite, we're referring to the legs of the triangle, not the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse has its own specific label. So cosine of 45 degrees is 1 over square root of 2. 1 over square root of 2. Please rationalize by multiplying by the square root of 2 over itself. <clears throat> so you'll have square root of 2 over 2. <clears throat> Next, 3 cotangent of 30 degrees. Alright, so the 3 stays out front. It'll be multiplied by whatever cotangent of 30 degrees is. First off, what was cotangent? Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. If tangent's opposite over adjacent, I believe cotangent would have to be adjacent over opposite. <clears throat> 30 degrees is my angle I'm concerned with. So let me draw a 30, 60, 90 triangle. It doesn't matter where you put the 30 degree angle and where you put the 60 degree angle. As long as you put 1 across from 30, square root of 3 across from 60, and 2 across from the 90. <clears throat> cotangent of 30 degrees. Adjacent over opposite. Square root of 3 over 1. So we have to multiply these two numbers together. You have 3 over 1 times square root of 3 over 1. That gives you 3 square roots of 3. Now time for another example. Secant of pi over 3 plus cosine of pi over 4. Now, if you don't like radians, convert to degrees. Pi is the same thing as 180 degrees. 180 divided by 3 is 60. And 180 divided by 4 is 45. Now, remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which means the reciprocal, which is secant, would be hypotenuse over adjacent. <laughs> Let's evaluate. Secant of 60 degrees, so go to your 60 degree angle, hypotenuse over adjacent, 2 over 1. Then cosine of 45 degrees, adjacent's 1, hypotenuse is square root of 2. So you have 1 over square root of 2. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and combine these two fractions. So the common denominator is square root of 2. So my first fraction will become 2 square root of 2 over square root of 2 plus 1 over square root of 2. <clears throat> so this is actually going to give you 2 square root of 2 plus 1 over square root of 2. <clears throat> if you haven't guessed it already, yes, we do need to rationalize this. So I need to multiply top and bottom both by square root of 2. So I'll have square root of 2 times 2 square root of 2 plus 1. 
over square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4, which is 2. <clears throat> now we have to go through and distribute over the numerator. We have 2 times the square root of 4. So you have 2 square roots of 4. 2 times 2, which is 4. And then we have square root of 2 times 1, which is just square root of 2. So you have 4 plus square root of 2 over 2. That is your final answer. <coughs> it is fully rationalized. <coughs> now what happens when they give you angles that are greater than 90 degrees? Because we just talked about 30, 45, and 60 degree angles. Well, anytime they give you an angle greater than 90 degrees, you actually just have to go and take the given angle that's in quadrants 2, 3, or 4 and move it to quadrant 1 using the following formulas. <clears throat> this is called finding the reference angle of the angle they give you. So if your angle is in quadrant 2, then the reference angle would be 180 degrees minus the given angle theta. Or if you're talking radians, pi minus the given angle theta. If they give you an angle in quadrant 3, the reference angle is the given angle minus 180 degrees, or the given angle minus pi. <clears throat> if they give you an angle in quadrant 4, then it's 360 degrees minus the given angle, or 2 pi minus the given angle. That is how you find the reference angle. So, well, if we're moving an angle back to quadrant 1, what was the point in them giving it to us in quadrant 2, 3, and 4? And what the quadrant of an angle indicates is what the sine is of that trig function at that specific angle. So what is the sine going to be of that specific trig expression? And that's determined by what angle the original, <coughs> what quadrant the original angle was in. <coughs> so consider the following. I have my coordinate plane. Quadrant one, I have all, then I move to quadrant two. Students, take calculus. Whether you think it's true or not, this is a good way to remember what the signs of each of the trig functions are in each of the quadrants. So all, in quadrant one, all trig functions are positive. All of them, every single one. In quadrant two, you have students. Students, in quadrant two, sine and its inverse, cosecant, are positive. So four of the trig functions are negative and only sine and cosecant are positive. In quadrant three, tangent, and its inverse, cotangent, are positive. So think about take. T is for tangent, and its inverse, cotangent. Calculus, C, in quadrant four, cosine, and its inverse, secant, are positive. So cosine and secant are the only positive trig functions in quadrant four. <clears throat> so anytime you have to find a trig function's value at a specific angle, remember the following steps. So determine what quadrant the angle is in. Find the reference angle using the formulas on the previous page. Draw a right triangle with the indicated reference angle and then label the triangle using the 45, 45, 90 or 30, 60, 90 relationships. Evaluate the trig function's value at the angle measure and determine whether the answer is positive or negative depending on where the original angle was. What quadrant was the original angle in? Guess we should work some examples now. <clears throat> Sine of 5 pi over 4. Now, once again, if you don't like radians, go ahead and convert it to degrees. That's perfectly fine. <clears throat> but 5 pi over 4. 5 divided by 4 is 1.25. So this is about 1.25 pi. It's a little bit more than just 1 pi. So this is actually going to be a quadrant 3 angle. This angle is in quadrant 3. So in quadrant 3, is sine positive or negative? Well, in quadrant 3, remember all students take calculus. Quadrant 3, tangent and cotangent are positive. That's it. Therefore, sine is negative. Sign is negative. Let's remember that. Don't forget that. You're in your final answer. You'll have to put a negative sign. <clears throat> All right, so now we need to find the reference angle. So now I need to find the reference angle. The reference angle for quadrant three is going to be whatever your angle is 
minus pi minus pi. So that's 5 pi over 4 minus 4 pi over 4, which is just pi over 4, <laughs> or 45 degrees. All right, so now we're going to actually go in and we're going to evaluate sine of pi over 4. We're going to evaluate sine of pi over 4. And what to do that, well, I guess we'll draw a right triangle, a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So remember, pi over 4 is 45 degrees. Label your sides, 1, 1, and square root of 2. Go to your 45 degree angle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. 1 over square root of 2. 1 over square root of 2. Go ahead and uh, rationalize while you're at it here. Multiply by square root of 2 over itself and you get square root of 2 over 2. Now this is the sine of pi over 4, the reference angle of my original quadrant 3 angle. Well we already mentioned that in quadrant 3 sine is negative. So literally take your answer, sine of pi over 4, square root of 2 over 2, and just throw a negative sign in front of it. And you're done. It's very important you don't forget that last step of throwing in that negative sign. <coughs> Next, cotangent of 240 degrees what quadrant are we in? We are actually going to be in quadrant number three. Remember our, quadrant, our quadrants here, we have all students take calculus. T is for tangent and cotangent. Cotangent is positive. Cotangent is positive in quadrant three. So our final answer, <coughs> cotangent of 240 will be positive. All right, then I need to go ahead and do my reference angle. How do you find a reference angle for an angle in quadrant three? Well, you just take 240 and subtract 180. You'll pull this formula from the previous slides. <clears throat> Which means my reference angle is what, 60 degrees, right? So now I just have to go in and find cotangent of 60 degrees. I suppose that means I need to draw me a triangle with a 60 degree angle in it. A 30, 60, 90 triangle. Label the sides appropriately. Learn this relationship. It'll benefit you in the long run. Cotangent. Well, if tangent is opposite over adjacent, then cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So go to your 60 degree angle. Adjacent's one, opposite square root of three. I have one over square root of three. I guess we should rationalize, right? So multiply by square root of 3 over itself. And it turns out you get square root of 3 over 3. So that means that cotangent of 240 degrees is square root of 3 over 3. Is it positive or negative? Well, cotangent is positive in quadrant 3, so keep your answer positive. Well, how about a negative angle? <clears throat> well, there's a few ways you could address this, but one way you could do this is to just go ahead and add 360 degrees to the angle. Because that doesn't change anything. It'll just give us a positive angle instead. A positive angle of 330 degrees. <clears throat> what quadrant are we in at 330 degrees? We are in quadrant 4. <clears throat> All right, so quadrant four, let's find out if secant is positive or negative. All students take calculus. <clears throat> All right, so quadrant four, cosine and secant are positive. So secant is positive. All right, so secant is positive. <clears throat> well, now I just need to find the reference angle here. So I have to look at my quadrant four reference angle formula. And I believe it says that you take 360 degrees and subtract the given angle. Subtract the quadrant 4 angle. Subtract 330 degrees. And you'll get 30. So my reference angle is 30 degrees. So now the goal is going to be let's find secant of 30 degrees. Which means that we need to draw a triangle. 
a 30, 60, 90 triangle. All right, so label your sides. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. If cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, secant would have to be hypotenuse over adjacent. Hypotenuse is two, adjacent is square root of three. Two over square root of three. <coughs> Guess we gotta rationalize, right? So we're gonna multiply by a square root of three over itself. And then we'll have two square roots of three over three. So my final answer is secant of 330 degrees. I'm in quadrant four, secant is positive. So just keep the two square roots of three over three positive. And box in your answer. So what you just learned is how to apply trig functions to various angle measures. In the next video, we'll actually look at some of the properties of trig functions and use those to our benefit as we find a trig function's value at a specific angle measure. Thanks for watching.